Hello friends, I am Chevy. Welcome to my shed. How are you today? How's life in your world? How's things where you are? I hope it's fantastic. Everything here is great. Um, yesterday, uh, Chris um, sent me a gift and then we talked a little about it. And um, I talked about having my chest freezer because my parents got me meat and that was my first whatever. And he proceeded to tell me about his brother uh, who has a garage with a bunch of freezers in it that he stocks with fish that he catches, like tuna and stuff. He goes out and um, catches hundreds of pounds of fish and then keeps it all in his garage. And he asked me if um, if I hunt and fish. And I think we've talked about it before, but let's consolidate. I haven't in a very long time. Uh, I used to hunt and fish a lot. I live in Appalachia. Growing up hunting is and fishing is part of life, right? Hunting, not as much as fishing for me. My father never did either. Uh, I guess he tried hunting when he was younger. My His brother-in-law, my uncle, um, <coughs> was, is a, still is alive, uh, was an avid hunter and fisherman, like avid hunter and fisherman. And so he got my dad to go a couple of times with him, but my dad didn't enjoy the experience and just never really did it. So I didn't grow up in a hunting and fishing house, but outside of that house, my grandfather and my uncle, who I just told you about, were both big influences on me, and both of them loved to hunt and fish and took me often. Uh, I also had a cousin. Well, I still have a cousin. Uh, she had a husband, who they are no longer together, and he took me hunting and fishing. Well, I don't know about fishing. He took me hunting uh, quite a bit. So... In my younger life, I hunted and fished a lot. Uh, my grandfather hunted um, mostly small game, rabbits, squirrel, groundhog. He would hunt groundhog just to get rid of them, not necessarily because he wanted to eat them. Um, but he fished a lot. So he taught me how to fish when I was tiny. And we went fishing a lot. There was a, He lived near a river and we would go down there and go fishing a lot. <clears throat> my uncle mostly hunted... Uh, he hunted everything that he could legally hunt. <laughs> Deer, turkey, pheasant, uh, grouse, rabbit, squirrel, all of that. He used to actually, when I was little, I remember he belonged to a hunting club and they had like 50 or 60 some acres and he would raise grouse and pheasant to release on that property so that him and his hunting club could, could hunt, hunt those because they basically don't exist in the wild anymore. When I was... When I was little, there was still pheasant and grouse. You would still hear them if you walked through the woods. That all went away. I mean, they got overhunted to a crazy amount. If you go to the southern part of the state, there's still some grouse. You'll, you'll hear them every now and then. But up here, just not a thing anymore. Um, he took me rabbit hunting a bit. He took me deer hunting a good bit. My cousin's uh, ex-husband took me deer hunting, rabbit hunting, squirrel hunting. Did all of those things. Fished a lot. My uncle also lived literally like on the flood plain of a river. His house got flooded twice when I was younger. Uh, we fished there. <clears throat> so, yes, uh, when I was younger, I did a lot of that stuff. When I went to the Marine Corps, I uh, got stationed in Hawaii. There's no hunting there. Like you, That's not technically true. You can hunt with a knife. <laughs> but there's no bow hunting or gun hunting, none of that kind of thing. Uh, so none of that happened. <clears throat> and... Um, I didn't do a lot of sea fishing. I did a, f I think I went a couple of times, but what I did mostly was spear fishing, scuba diving. I did a lot of scuba diving, spear fishing. So we would spear fish uh, for uh, mahi mahi and um, grill them on the beach and, and have a little feast. Uh, also, illegally, we would spear lobster. You're not allowed to spear lobster for some reason. Uh, the lobsters in Hawaii are rock lobsters. They don't have the big pincers like red lobsters you would see around. Uh, these are just little shrimp looking guys and they hide in rock crevices and you gotta, you're supposed to reach in there and grab them, but we would spear them and then take them up on the beach and cook them and eat them. So I did a lot of that. <clears throat> I did Not a lot, but I did a good amount of that. When I got out of the military, came back, I really didn't have, I, I took a, like a break for a while. Maybe I went fishing a good bit, maybe not. 
didn't really hunt for a while uh, until I got my job as an auto mechanic, and then I had friends there that hunted and fished a, a lot, and I so I got more into it as an adult. And uh, we would go driving every year. You know, like that's a type of hunting where you kind of flush the deer out of the woods, and you you got a line of people ready to shoot. Get five or six or ten deer in a day, kind of thing. <clears throat> everybody divides it up, and everybody gets some meat. That that sort of stuff. Did a lot of that. Uh, but fishing, I fished a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Uh, and I, I always loved trout fishing. Um, I really got heavily into trout fishing for a decade of my life, probably. I traveled uh, during... Trout fishing is usually in the winter. The trout like the colder water, and they stock in the winter. So I would travel. It's about an hour and a half, two-hour drive to a place where there's natural streams, and there's they, they really thrive there. And I would fish like every weekend I would go. Did a lot of bass fishing uh, in ponds. I never really had a boat to fish out of. Fished a few times. That's not true. I floated. I had a John boat that I could float. I didn't have a motor on it. Floated it a few times to fish the West Fork. Did a lot of wading fishing, a lot of fly fishing. Uh, loved fishing. That The trout is the only fish that I kept to eat. I never really liked eating bass. I, I've eaten bass when I was younger. We we caught them and, and cooked them. I've eaten catfish. They're okay. Tried carp, never again. Like, I've tried a lot of them, but trout would be the one that I would keep. I would bring them home, and I, I have memories of me cleaning fish in the sink and my youngest, or my oldest, standing on a stool beside me watching and me being grossed out, going, ew, but then she would want to watch anyway. Clean fish, fillet them, put them in the freezer, that sort of stuff. So, <clears throat> when I moved here, I've lived here now for 10 years in this house, and uh, we're in a development that's nobody here is wealthy, but we're, it's an upper scale HOA type of development. And I don't really have a place to clean deer here. Um, I, we're not supposed to hang them outside. I'm not going to hang them in my garage because if you've ever done that. The smell is not great. It, 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 it's a very unique smell. It's not a bad smell, but it never goes away. It like permeates the walls and just doesn't go away. Uh, so I'm not going to do that in my garage. I just haven't had a place to, to clean uh, game. And for some reason, I just kind of stopped fishing when I moved here. I maybe went a few times um, to like local streams and did rock bass fishing, like pan fishing, which are they're just little like sunfish, rock bass type fish. They're really fun to catch because you can go out in a day and just catch dozens of them and turn them in, you know, throw them back in. So I used to do a decent amount of that just to relax, but I haven't even done that in years and years and years, probably... I mean, at least since M's been in my life, maybe eight years now. She's been around for almost five now. So I haven't, I haven't really done any hunting or fishing in a very long time. The last deer I killed was probably fifteen years ago, something like that. Fourteen years ago, um, hung it in my. I remember the last one that I. I remember having this conversation with my oldest. She was like four or five years old, and she said, you're not going to hurt the deer, are you? And I said, no. You know, and then she said, okay, Daddy. Uh, I still have all my rifles. I still have them. Well, I don't have any of my fishing gear anymore. I got rid of all my fishing gear except for a couple of, like, sentimental things from my grandfather. But I don't have any of my poles or anything. They all got kind of old and corroded and nasty. So I just said, if I ever get back into fishing again, I'll start over because I can actually afford it now. At that time, I was just like garage sailing together stuff to go fishing. Uh, if I wanted to go fishing right now, I could afford to go get a nice setup and, and have um, have nice gear. And the stuff that I had was kind of dry rotted and nasty. So I just let it all go. But uh, it's been a long time. You know, your brother sounds like he's doing it correctly. I, I used to have this friend. I haven't seen him in a very long time. He was like a... He somehow got into contracting, um, he would, he would haul materials, but he didn't have a CDL. He did it with like a fifth wheel truck and a big trailer and he would haul like pipeline materials. And for whatever reason, the pipelines would use him because of insurance or something. And because he wasn't a CDL, he could go places that the other trucks couldn't go and he could get it there faster kind of stuff. He didn't have to abide by the, the laws that apply to trucks. And he made a lot of money doing that. Well, he could have made a lot more, but he made what he wanted to make 
in you know a couple of days a week, and then the rest of the time he would literally just drive around the state every time there was a stocking and just go fish. And it was like that was the lifestyle I wanted to live at that time. I was like that is that sounds just phenomenal to me. Just you know work a couple of days a week and then just go fishing for the rest of the week. That would be phenomenal. Now probably not so much. I still enjoy being outside and, and doing outdoor activities, and I would love to do that, but. I'm much more interested now in creative endeavors, especially in here. If I had the time now, ultimately, I would rather make something. Uh, and so, you know, the ultimate goal is to work a couple of days a week and then play around in the shop. Somehow, I'm going to figure out how to make that happen. Hopefully, M becomes like a CEO of her company or something, and then I just can be a stay-at-home dad. <laughs> We've joked about that for years. That, that's nothing new I'm springing on anybody. It's been a joke for a long time. Thank you for being here as always. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, being amazing friends and wonderful people. I really appreciate you. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Today's word you should know sounds smart is ostentatious. It is an adjective meaning pretentious, presented in a showy manner so as to impress others, visibly flaunting one's wealth or success. The man who is ostentatious of his modesty is the twin of the statue that wears a fig leaf. Mark Twain. Ostentatious. O-S-T-E-N-T-A-T-I-O-U-S. That's a good word. I like that word. I, and I, I like describing people as ostentatious. We all know those people, right?